Hello. If you're like me, you'll have got your seed potatoes by now. You'll have them standing somewhere, hopefully cheating up, like these ones are. These are the uh, Sapo Muda uh, that I've got. And I've only had these um, about two weeks. But as you can see, they're actually starting to look uh, as though they're wanting to kick on. You can see that these sets have got life in them. And then when I plant these, they're going to grow. Um, now you may be keeping yours in the light and the warmth, or in the dark and the warmth. But wherever they are, they'll be dry and they'll be throwing these short sprouts up. So if we have a look at these ones underneath. These are Maris Piper. Okay. Now these are all main, uh, main crop potatoes. Uh, and I'm not unduly worried that these chits are quite small at the moment because it is a number of weeks before we actually plant these. Um, but I do like to see chits on potatoes. If nothing else, it tells me that that potato is viable and it's going to grow on. Okay, there's life in that potato. The chits tell you that. The sprouts tell you that. So if you've got potatoes that aren't chitting and aren't sprouting, whilst it isn't um, a great concern, uh, it's more reassuring um, if they do have sprouts on them. So I prefer them to have sprouts on. Uh, and if I can uh, make them sprout before I plant them, uh, I'm that much happier. Okay, now the Sapa Miro that I've just shown you, and these Maris Piper, these are certified seed potatoes. Okay, I'm just going to show you some potatoes here that aren't certified po seed potatoes. They're potatoes that were bought uh, in a bag from the local farm for consumption to be eaten. But I've set some aside. Let me show you those. These are them Romano. Now as you can see, there doesn't seem to be any sign of life. Okay, these potatoes haven't started to chit yet. And whilst that's um, not too big a worry, I'm sure they're probably all viable. Um, what I intend to do um, is try a little experiment and try and make these potatoes chit. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to roughly divide them in half, keep half of them just as they are, and the other half, I'm going to sow them temporarily in some compost, so that instead of them being in the light and the warmth and being dry, they'll be in the dark, they'll be damp, but they'll still be in the warmth. And we'll see if that um, encourages these um, potatoes to chit up um, more than the sample that are left behind. We'll, we'll, we'll see if that, um, we'll, we'll try that little experiment um, and what I will do is um, stay with this video because the result of that experiment will be on this video. Uh, I'll just be switching the camera off and then re recording again in two or three weeks time and we'll record uh, the results of this little experiment. Okay, so I'll just show you what I'm going to do now. This is some uh, coca koi. Um, to all intents and purposes, compost. Okay, it's still a bit damp because I, I re only reconstituted this with water maybe a fortnight ago and it, it's still holding that dampness. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put those sets, cover them up with this koi in a pot and let them stand for two or three weeks and then we'll see what they look like when they come out. So we'll just take this pot out of this pot. So now we have an empty pot. Okay, we'll drop 
a couple of inches of koi into that so the potatoes aren't sitting on the bottom. And we're going to we're going to sit these potatoes in this pot now on that koi. Okay. I'll just turn this up so, it, so that you can maybe see what it is I'm trying to do here. Um, there are the potatoes in the bottom. Now we're just going to go layer upon layer upon layer so that when we top this off there should be about half a dozen sets in there. Okay, we can get another one in low down. Right, we'll cover those over with koi. So these are now going to be in the dark and they're going to be in a damp environment. Um, but remember we're not we're not actually sowing these potatoes now, they're just going to be in here for a couple of weeks hopefully. I'll shake it in. So those are buried up now. Put another three in there. Okay, so that's half a dozen sets in there, I'm going to cover these up and that's the experiment on its way. Oops, wow. this a shack. Let's see if we've shook it in. So that's six Romano going to stand in that for two or three weeks and these Romano that are left on this tray we'll leave those as our uh, as our comparators. So we'll compare these with what's in the pot in two or three weeks time and we'll see what the result is. Okay so we'll switch off now and we'll start re-recording in uh, two or three weeks time and it'll be on the end of this video so stay with it. Time to shoot the second part of this video. These are the Romano that we uh, set aside. These are the potatoes that were bought at the local farm. As you can see, they've now started to chit up. So in some respects it's, uh, it's panic over. Uh, I was a wee bit worried that these guys perhaps weren't going to chit. Um, but as you can see, starting to throw chits up, so we're okay with that. So I'm not too sure what value we'll get out of uh, the experiment I've been conducting, but what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to get the pot that I sowed the other uh, Romano potatoes in, albeit temporarily. We'll put them in here and we'll see if there's any difference. We'll see if Romano has responded better to dark, damp, warm conditions than it had to uh, light, warm conditions. Okay, I'll need to move this off the table for a minute and bring this pot into the shot. Okay, this is the pot. Um, one thing I did do uh, after switching the video off uh, when I recorded the first part of the video was I realised that if these Romano uh, potatoes did sh uh, produce sprouts, produce chits, then I might just break them off as I try to get them out of this pot. 
So what I did do almost immediately, I'd switched the video off, was empty the contents out. Remember the potatoes had no chits on at the time. And then I filled the pot exactly as I uh, did first time round, except I lined it with a, a shopping bag. I think this should make life easier when I, I take these uh, potatoes out. So, and the biggest danger I've got here, apart from breaking any chits off or sprouts, is that I spill this uh, koi all over the place. So if we can oh, tease this out like this and get rid of this pot. Okay, and just let this bag fall down nice and easily uh, without spilling its contents. And we'll see if we can find those Romano uh, potatoes that we put in here. And there are six of them. Okay. So we'll just have a, a gentle, oh, gentle fish about, here's one. Oh ho! Wow! There's Molly's excited. Wow, look at that. Look at those cheats. I'll just put this in the tray with the other Romanos and I'll fish the other uh, five out. Yeah, it looks like Romano is ready to go. It likes it in the dark and the warm and the damp. Whether I'll do this again or not, I'm not too sure. Um, but these, these potatoes have certainly chitted a lot better and they are just standing in the tray. <coughs> Sorry about that, I've had to put Molly out. She's getting excited about something. Maybe it's the chitting of these potatoes. I doubt it. Okay. Four out, two to go. I'm quite pleased that I haven't spilled this stuff all over the place. This last one to go. Be near somewhere. There it is. Okay. So I'll just lift these uh, potatoes back onto the table and then we'll call it a day. Okay, so these are the Romano. These are the ones that stayed in the warm and the light. These are the ones in the damp and the dark and the warm. Okay, there's every danger I'm going to start and repeat myself now. I know I've already done that. Uh, so we'll wind this little experiment up. Um, but that's a, a, an alternative way of uh, chitting your seed potatoes. Okay, hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm not too sure if you've got anything out of it. I'm not too sure if I've got anything out of it. But anyway, we've shot it, so we'll post it. Homegrown veg. Signing out.